All right, good, you can hear me. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to present um, a search engine for the electronic dictionary of the Ukrainian language. This is, um, let's say, work in progress. It is a part of my master's thesis. So I will be glad to hear comments and maybe some suggestions uh, after this presentation. Um, first of all, what is the, uh, this electronic dictionary or VESUM as I'm going to refer to it sometimes? Um, VESUM is a direct transliteration of an acronym <coughs> of the Ukrainian uh, name for the dictionary. Velik elektroni slovnik ukrainsko move, large electronic, and so on. Um, this is a part of speech dictionary. It provides um, the morphological information as well. So it provides the lemmas, there are forms, and some tagging for the part of speech for the uh, kind of form that it provides. This dictionary is used um, in some uh, software, in particular in the spell checkers, like language tool, like Hanspell, is also uh, utilized in the uh, Ukrainian corpus. And um, in fact, this dictionary is a life project that is um, going on for many years, but it keeps being updated, corrected, um, enlarged with new words, in particular those that are found in the corpus. Uh, what we can see in this dictionary? It has a so-called internal representation, where it does not have all the word forms, it just has the lemmas. Obviously, on this slide you can understand that they are the pieces written in Cyrillic. And for each lemma, uh, what you see uh, after the slashes are the tags, the tag set that shows um, a special script how to form all the forms for this lemma. Uh, for some examples, you can see that okay, it provides information. What is uh, the part of speech? Like, is it an adverb? Is it a noun? And so on. Uh, obviously, we need this information to form the word forms. Uh, additionally, it can show the declension group for the uh, nouns. Uh, in, Ukrainian is an uh, inflected language that has different inflection groups, uh, in particular for nouns. It can have um, complicated verbal morphology as well, so we need to show this kind of information. In addition to that, um, there can be some specialized tags showing, um, for example, um, well, alterations in some forms, like this um, ke, uh, showing that in vocative case, this noun has the end in e. Uh, apart from that, the inflection can be um, influenced by some semantic information. Uh, like uh, the nouns um, can depend on whether they are animate, inanimate. Um, and here we can see an example uh, that um, the angle bracket shows that a given noun is an animate noun, or to be more precise, it shows that this noun denotes human. Um, this is how the dictionary looks inside. Uh, from this representation, which is basically stored as a text file, uh, what we get, um, what we can get for the end users, is the so-called visual representation um, that looks something like this. So there is a lemma, there are all the forms, and there are all the tags showing which form is that. So, for example, we have the word uh, conference. conference. Uh, the tags show that it is a noun, uh, it is inanimate. As you see, text set is slightly different from what we've seen before. 
and it shows um, the number, the case, and so on. This is what a user on the Vesum uh, web page would be able to access. And this representation, it is slightly more readable than the previous one, uh, but still um, it is not exactly what we would like to see in the, in the dictionary when we open it. We probably want um, some more readable representation that, okay, this is an instrumental case instead of the oru, which um, is taken from Ukrainian words v for Vidminok case and oru for orudny instrumental. We probably don't want to see it like that. But apart from it, um, it actually loses some of the internal information. So uh, we do not have um, markings, for example, for humans or for the Klingon groups, for nouns. Uh, so this representation is not, not perfect. Um, here is the example of how we can see it on the website, on the current search form. So if we input the word, that this is exactly what we get, this visual representation. Um, this search form, as you see, it just provides a search by a word or by a part of word. Uh, you can search by lemma or you can search among the forms. That's it. Although you have an information, for example, on parts of speech, on animacy, on gender, um, you cannot really um, use these features in your queries. Uh, so, what is the problem here? There are several of them. Uh, first of all, it's simply inconvenient. It's hard to, to perceive. And secondly, it's not very functional because we have a lot of information in the dictionary. We have a lot of information about the lemmas, but we can't really use it like that. Yeah, okay, you can download the whole uh, database. You can make your own scripts, uh, do retrieve whatever you need, but that would require some coding, some programming. Uh, what we'd like to have is a um, convenient interface for the users, for people who can visit the website and search for whatever they want to see. In order not to start from scratch, um, I compared some of the interfaces, some of the databases of other languages. Uh, first of all, it were other Slavic languages. Uh, there are good um, examples in the Polish grammatical dictionary and in Belarusian grammatical database. Whatever, apart from that, I was also recommended to look at some English resources because, okay, English uh, is a large language which has a lot of instruments uh, for which everything must be developed. Uh, so I looked at some dictionaries and um, let's see what I found there. Um, this is the Polish uh, grammatical dictionary. It has a lot of information, a lot of data, inflection tables. It's very, very nice and it indeed um, provides a lot of search functionality for, um, for, every, for, for the words in this database. Uh, the information like uh, NMSC, like some statistics, is also integrated with the Polish corpus, so it's very nice and convenient. And the only thing that I don't like about it is that uh, you need really to spend some time in order to find even some simple, uh, simple thing, like a search by a regular expression. I experimented. I gave it to some person who saw it for the first time and it took them 15 minutes to just find, find the right button. So this is not very, not very good. Um, another thing um, that I've looked at is the Belarusian grammar database, which looks really nice and um, which provides slightly less functionality than Polish one. Uh, but is really user-friendly, is really intuitive. And 
going forward, I'll tell right, say right away that this is the solution that I used, and we'll look into it um, a bit later. Uh, now, going to the resources for the English language. Mm, okay, there are a lot of very good dictionaries for English. Like, they provide information, examples, everything is nice, but we can't really use this information. We cannot, this is, for example, the Cambridge Dictionary. I can search by a word. I cannot filter by, by part of speech. I cannot even write a regular expression in this, in the search query. Um, there are some specialized resources uh, that would allow, for example, searching by a word mask, uh, something that probably is something that is more oriented on people sol solving crosswords, to be honest. But um, linguistic resources are not like that. So this thing is not what we want, right? So what we end up with? we end up with a uh, Belarusian interface. Why is it convenient? Because um, it is nice, it is user-friendly. As I said, you can intuitively find whatever functionality you need. Um, the developer of um, this interface um, had in mind um, that it might be adapted for other languages. Uh, so that's another thing that is was great about it. Uh, I would say though that okay, it needed some adapting, a lot of adapting. Um, okay, what do we, uh, what tasks are we having here when we are uh, changing this interface for the Ukrainian vessel? Uh, first of all, we have had uh, some text structure, uh, some structure of entries for the Ukrainian dictionary. Uh, but of course, um, this database works with a slightly different uh, structure of tagging. Um, so that would be the first step. The second thing is basically setting up this whole thing, um, which meant uh, taking apart uh, the Belarusian tools and uh, choosing what we need and setting it up together. And of course, something like adapting user interface to make it all nice and relevant to the Ukrainian because we have slightly different pieces of information in the Belarusian and in the Ukrainian database. Uh, and of course, planning a lot of future work. So let's see. Uh, when I'm saying about diff uh, different dictionary structure, you've seen the tag set on the beginning. Um, with all those angle brackets, not very structured um, tags containing letters. Uh, what the, um, this tool expects is um, a set of tags that are basically one letter tags, one letter sequences, sequences of letters. Um, this thing expects special XML files, so it required me to uh, write a script that can translates one database into the other one. Um, in fact, um, as what you see here is um, a piece of an XML file that was used in the first version of the dictionary. That okay was something I built uh, before submitting this paper. By now, um, it is rebuilt on the proper as a proper Postgres database for the um, better functionality, for the better usage of memory, and so on. What we see here is our favorite word, conferencia, uh, with uh, some tags showing its grammatical features. That it is a noun, it is a common noun, an animate noun, it is not an abbreviation, and it is feminine. And here are the forms. Uh, nominative singular, genitive singular, and so on. Uh, so, this is the structure of the entry. About the dictionary, the setup, basically um, translating the tag set that the engine expects and translating the interface into Ukrainian. Okay, this is another piece of coding, another piece of setting up. 
this all gives us the following results. Um, this is the uh, updated uh, search interface view, the main view. Uh, here we have the search by word uh, list of results, which can be matching it with some information about the results. Let me show you the some translations. So we can do searches by lemmas or their forms as in the initial dictionary. Uh, we can set different display order. Uh, we have information on the lemmas, like uh, for the first uh, entry, we see that it is a noun, it is a common noun, and so on and so forth. Um, it is an abbreviation, so we provide uh, the meaning for it. Um, for other parts of speech, okay, I'm focusing mainly on the nouns as an example here, but we have also an adjective uh, confederativni here. So we have also different grammatical information for different parts of speech. For the adjective, we see that it is a positive form, not a comparative, not a superlative. Uh, and the most interesting part is what we see here as search grammar setup, or in Ukrainian, um, this is where we do all the interesting stuff. So here we can choose a part of speech that interests us. So for example, let's say I want to, I'm a researcher who is interested in finding um, all the Ukrainian nouns ending in a, which is a typical feminine ending, but all such nouns that are of masculine gender. So I would uh, write a regular expression and choose the relevant um, relevant boxes here in this form. Here, again, an example for nouns. Uh, we can search by different features. Is it a common or proper noun? Is it animate? Is it an abbreviation? What gender it is? Uh, we also can have um, the display of some specific forms. Uh, for that, we have another piece of this form showing the case and the number. So this is basically the objective of this all, to be able to use some uh, grammatical information uh, to do the queries on the dictionary on its database. Um, Last but not least, uh, by clicking on a word, on a lemma, we can get its representation uh, the, with all the forms, which is pretty much similar to what is present in the old interface, but okay, it's in much more readable format. I hope you will agree. Um, one more thing to note is that sometimes um, some words can have um, several possible forms in one box and in this format you will at least see it not unlike in the old search interface and um, here we of course have uh, readable representations of what is what uh, what is the number if it's singular or plural what is the case if it's um, nominative genitive dative and so on for different uh, parts of speech, of course, it will be different tables for verbs. We have tenses, numbers, and so on. For adjectives or adverbs, we would see uh, the degrees of comparison. Um, this is um, the, these are the pieces that we can see, that we can use. Um, and overall, okay, um, this is the initial work that is done already. Uh, but of course, there are many more things to do. Um, what I want to also uh, focus on are the next steps, the next things to do. Um, first of all, what you might have noticed is that at the beginning I showed you uh, 
two formats of the current vessel. The first format, which has information like declension table, declension classes, uh, if it's a human or non-human, or for other nouns, it can be like if it's a surname and so on. Uh, and the visual one. So here I first work with the visual representation, but next step obviously would be to combine those two forms so that we have a more grammatical information. Um, apart from that, there are several, okay, there is a huge to-do list of what is to be done uh, with some particularities, but just some examples that we can link different phonetical ver variants of uh, each lemma. For example, Ukrainian has a nice euphony of words starting with V and with U, like this word for teacher, Uchitil, Uchitil. Um, another example would be processing of uh, different spellings according to the new and the old orthography. Ukrainian had some updates in orthography in 2019, so some words you can see in different spellings now. This also needs some handling. Um, from a different perspective, what is also to be done is linking with different resources. It's on the one hand, just adding the links, but of course, uh, trying to um, use this resource in other Ukrainian tools and vice versa. And last but not least, I thought it's important, since I'm at this conference presenting in English, um, it is important uh, to make it available in English localization, so that next time I don't need to write the translations and can make nice uh, slides. Nice screenshots. So, as I say, it's a work in progress. There are a lot of things to be done, and um, that's that's what I'm gonna do. And hopefully, next time I present it even nicer. Thank you. Thank you very much for this um, uh, very illustrative um, presentation. Um, I'm looking around for, we have still three, four minutes for questions or comments or ideas. Ah, yes. Um, this might, uh, forgive me for asking this question because uh, perhaps I didn't pay attention uh, on the right slide, but um, you, you can search for inflected forms too in your search interface. For example, confidentiality, and it tells you that it's, it's the, the, the dative and genitive singular of confidentiality, or is it uh, only the lemmas that you will find? Uh, yes, let me find the respective slide. So here um, on the left, you can see that you can search by lemmas or by forms. So um, ah, the it, it, it's chosen the right. form, and you can choose the the form. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have another question because that is something that bothers me in another project of mine. And there are cases where there are two different locative forms or two different genitive forms in Ukrainian um, uh, lexemes and uh, nouns and. Uh, is that part of your system that it uh, shows both locative forms, for example, if you have two, two of them, or what? What is the solution that you uh, take? Yes. Look um, here. When we have uh, the basically the list of forms, um, we could just add another form with similar tag. Mm -hmm. um, we can sometimes add some more okay. tagging to show when when which is used if they are different. Right. Uh, for example, for adjectives, there can be two forms that are used, right. like with uh, animate and animate nouns. And um, the, here, there is also a special handling. So if there are several forms, you will just see both of them here. There are additional yes. rows. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. There's room for one more question. Otherwise, I have a short one uh, about the spelling reform in 2019. Um, you said you would add new entries uh, according to the spelling reform? Look, um, there are already entries in Vesum which have uh, the old forms and the new forms. They are marked for the spelling of 2019. Mm -hmm. It's just that um, they are currently, uh, as far as I've seen, they're separate entries, not really connected. So. We need to somehow link them. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can. understand. Okay, so I don't see immediate other questions. So we thank you very much for thank the you. nice presentation.